everyone. I'm Rochelle Lefebvre, and I am joined by my fantastic, wonderful, amazing, <laughs> there aren't enough good adjectives in the world, co-star <laughs> Niall Mater. Hi, everyone. We are really, really excited for all of you to see our new movie, The Secrets of Bella Vista. Thank you for that intro, Rochelle. <laughs> Anytime, Niall. You have my Venmo, right? I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we have a couple of questions uh, that Hallmark Movies and Mysteries has sent our way that we're going to answer for you all. Uh, should we just dive right in? Let's dive right in. Okay. Uh, question number one. In The Secrets of Bella Vista, my character Tess receives a mysterious inheritance and she learns about it from Niall's character, Dominic. Can we share more about how our characters meet? Yeah, well, um, our characters both meet in, uh, I guess, in a professional atmosphere. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, my character is an executor of an estate and he basically scours the world to find Rochelle's character, Tess. And um, and he delivers some some news to her that uh, actually kind of knocks her socks off. Yeah, uh, couldn't agree more. My uh, favorite moment, actually, um, one of my favorite moments is uh, that moment where we meet in uh, we meet in a lobby. And I love how, like, in the beginning, they established Tess very much as like a fast talking, like always has a retort, always has something to say, constantly wheels turning moment. And then I love there's this beat where uh, Niall's character Dominic comes up to me and says a couple of things and what he says and the sort of witty back and forth and you know the whole package of him and there's this great moment I got to play where I was just like uh. and the director was like what were you thinking and I was like I think it was Tess just going I got nothing like for the first time just speechless and yeah. I thought that was a really good way to like introduce the effect of what happened when they were together I couldn't agree more all right, I'll do the next one here. So Tess is convinced to learn more about Bella Vista and Dominic offers to help. How does the orchard bring our characters closer together? Well, one of the first things it did to bring us closer together was you had to keep correcting me that it was Bella Vista and not Bella Vista. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the first thing you did was teach me how to say the name of the place. <laughs> yep, that is the very first thing. That happens to uh, if, uh, if anyone out there needs to learn how to gently correct people without making them feel silly, even though it's been the 20th time, uh, Niall can teach you. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very, very true. Yeah. But what um, else? I think, I think the orchard, um, I think the orchard is something that my character, Dominic, um, is very familiar with. And he really wants to share the beauty of the orchard and what the orchard means to him. Um, and that's really what brings these characters um, tightly bound together because Dominic is kind of an honorary member of the family and, and Tess is coming in to um, meeting a lot of people that are, are her family members and she didn't necessarily know about them. And I think that instantly brings these two characters together quite quickly. Yeah, and I think family is the operative word there. That yeah. was the thing that I really loved about this, especially being a mom now, was that it's the idea that like Bella Vista really represents family and that's not something that Tess has uh, good associations with or really any knowledge of like what that could be and how magical that can be. And I feel like Dominic is instrumental through Bella Vista, like yeah. inviting her into a new definition of family and, and what it can mean. And how strong that bond can be and how quickly it can it can form yeah yeah agreed uh is it your turn or my turn i think it's uh number three is Freeze me yep all right dominic grew up near bella vista and helps show tess the ropes from grape stomping to horseback riding without giving away any spoilers do we have a favorite scene we can't wait for viewers to see Oh, well, uh, I must say, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the grape stomping scene because- Yes, you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> I was, and like, I, didn't, I didn't expect that. I really didn't, but I loved it. I loved getting my feet in there. It was, uh, it, was, it was actually a very welcomed feeling on a very hot day. I found it extremely refreshing, and I'm shocked that I found it as refreshing as I did. And I didn't even stop, I, I didn't stop stomping. I just kept going, and Rochelle was like, we're not rolling right now. You can, you can stop. 
I didn't yeah, want Yeah, you were also insanely competitive. Like yeah. you forgot it was a movie and you were determined. You knew like, you know, we, we film these sometimes pretty quickly and you don't necessarily get a lot of takes. And I feel like Niall was, de- I feel like you were determined to stomp every grape in your barrel. I was. And then I'm, people I'm were actually. That. Yeah. <laughs> and I then the crew that. was actually coming over to look like, yeah, like Heather, our director, like people were coming over to look to actually see how much you'd liquefied the grapes in a very short time. Yeah. It was a challenge. Uh, you know, my character, that's, he, he, he tries to win every year. So I, <laughs> I got into it. Yep. What about you? What about you, Rochelle? Do you have a, a favorite, a favorite scene? Uh, I really liked the horseback riding. Um, and even more than the horseback riding, I loved the scenes in the stables where we were just with and around the horses. Yeah. Because, um, I got, I felt like it was like this moment where I got to be just sort of my regular goofy self. And if I was, you know, startled by a horse or laughing or kind of, you know, whatever, um, then it just, you know, Heather just allowed it and just wanted that in the movie. And you got to be the like stoic, I grew up on a farm cowboy character. (laughs) Right. And, and I mean, I did grow up on a farm, but (laughs) I, I was never, um, we we weren't horseback riding every single day. I'm I'm much more comfortable around cattle. I grew up with tons of cattle. Um, ah. I grew up in a dairy farm, but I'm I'm definitely I definitely know my way around a farm and around cattle. But uh, horses, not not as much. So that was all acting for me. It was all well. Acting. You played it very well. I <laughs> believed you. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Rochelle. Thank you. You know what else I loved? I just want to go back. I also loved everything in the plane. I loved everything in that small little airplane. It was, uh, cause I mean, those were some of the first scenes that we shot together. And I mean, there's no better way to bond than to be stuck. And we were, we were stuck, stuck. inside that fuselage for an entire day together. And it's like, hi, nice to meet you. Here we go. And we were just stuck in that plane. And the, the, the other thing I really love about those scenes is that's total movie magic. I mean, this is these. This is just two actors sitting in a plane on a runway, on a tarmac. We're not actually flying, so every sing, every every single thing that they'll see in the in the uh, movie will be um, like the windows. They, they have to they have to CGI that. They've got to do plate shots, and that that all gets built. So when when the fans get to see those scenes, I mean, we are we are acting as if we're flying, and we're not. We are we are just on the ground. And I got so silly that I even like did a. <laughs> I did like a landing. Remember that I startled you on the Oh, landing. you went full Maverick. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I could move that whole plane. So I, I did the landing. I stuck the landing, and uh, and Heather Hawthorne Doyle, who is our director, she loved it so much that they ended up going back out and they filmed the plane landing so they could use the footage of us actually landing. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's for they sure. had to use the second take of that where yes. I knew that that was happening yeah. though, because yeah. there is a really good blooper reel take where you got so excited and you went to stick the landing and you didn't tell me. Ah. And so we were next to each other in the plane yeah. and you were landing. Oh yeah, I, I was, was landing. Like still flying and looking you out were the just window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. So good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll go on to the next one here. Okay. So, Family, as we've already talked about, plays an important role in both Tess and Dominic's lives. How does uncovering the truth about Tess's family and Eva's treasure help our characters connect? Uh, you want to go? Or I'll, did I go yeah, first last I can, time? I can take that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the truth about Tess's family helps our characters connect because I have been a part of Tess's family for a really long time so I I know them and and Tess's sister Isabel or half sister Isabel um, and that's the news that I deliver in the very beginning to Tess which I which knocks her socks off uh, quite frankly and um, and my character and her are, are best friends so who better to teach Tess about her family than someone who is best friends with her half sister um, so I think that automatically bonds Tess and Dominic right away and then the mystery behind this is trying to find um, something of great worth, um, which is uh, family heirlooms. And it happens to be um, something that, that could help Tess uh, and Isabel and everyone involved potentially save Bella Vista. That was a great answer. <laughs> I'll, I'll add to it, but only because yeah. I feel like we're yeah, supposed, supposed to answer. But it was please such do. a great answer. Um, uh, and yes to everything. Um, 
Yeah, I think um, for me, for Tess, uh, part of the reason why Dominic is really like such the perfect person to introduce um, Tess into this space and this idea of family is that, um, you know, when we find out, try not to do spoilers, but like when we find out about Dominic's story, we find out that it, he is an outsider who has been welcomed and brought into the fold and Tess is an outsider and doesn't know if she's going to have a place. Um, and that really spoke to me because I come from a blended family. I have a stepsisters, half sisters, and then I was adopted as an adult. So I'm now one of four sisters and there's no step and there's no half. And, you know, and I felt very much sort of like an outsider who was like brought in and like the family that you create being just as legitimate as a blood bond. Um, and so I don't want to make it too heavy or whatever, you know, um, but I, that was really beautiful for me. Cause I think there's a lot of people out there um, in families where they just, you know, every family looks different and to have the message of family is how we love people and how we, and how we bring them in and how we hold them um, was just something that I, I, I feel really good about putting that into the world. So I felt like they connect our characters connected on that. I didn't know that, Michelle. I didn't know that. That's, I mean, that's. Well, I, we only I, had 15 hours a day yeah. for 21 days. So I, I, yeah, I, I can't tell that. you what everything. A, what a great answer. I love that. I love that. Wow. The truth is always the best, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Always, always. All right, shall we move on to number five? Yes, okay, number five. As Tess and Dominic are getting to know one another, they begin to realize they have more in common than they think. Why do you think viewers will resonate with their storyline? Why do I, I think, um, I think because both Tess and Dominic are, uh, are, are independent and they are, they haven't necessarily found the love of their life at a young age. You know, they both are professionals and they both are focused um, on their profession um, and they want to do it to the to the fullest i think that they've both maybe have let um love kind of slip to the wayside and when they meet each other uh i think both of them it causes them both to pause and reevaluate uh what's important to them in life you know and 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 i think dominic even reminds tess a couple times you know you don't have to do this on your own you know there's 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 someone beside you now you know and i think neither one of them necessarily had that before yeah absolutely um, and something that I, I love about like where they are when they find them, cause that's all true. And then they, you know, they realize that they can be those people for each other if they're willing to take that leap. Yeah. But when you meet them, like, like said, like they let love sort of fall to the wayside. They focused on other things, but neither of them, when you meet them, neither of them are unhappy. No, None, neither of them are feeling less than whole. Neither yeah. of them feel empty. You know, yeah. like we're not meeting characters who are, um, you know, I feel like, uh, traditionally, sometimes a uh, character characters can be portrayed as, um, you know, like their life isn't whole until they meet someone. Right. And uh, and I think there's definitely I, I understand that feeling and it has its yeah. place. But I also appreciate the idea that two people can be solid in their careers. They have family. They have love. They have friends. They have like their their hearts are really full and their lives are really full. And then they realize that it can be even better if they put their lives together. You know, mm -hmm. as opposed to something's missing. Yeah. Um, so I, I really appreciated that too. I and I think a lot of viewers will be able to resonate with that because I think a lot of people now are very happy, like 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 you said, in their in their life and the, in, in their routine, and they don't necessarily feel incomplete. And then you meet somebody, oh wait, and this person actually you know fulfills my life in a way that I I didn't have before, but I wasn't necessarily missing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this idea yeah. that you can like love your life and it can get better. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. Number six. When are we starting our relationship podcast, Niall? <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, when you get to Victoria, because we both found out that we are we're going to be filming in the same location, but filming different movies. What? What? <laughs> I can't wait but to. But they hang both up with you. have green and red sparkling lights behind them as decoration could they, they be movies of a certain genre i think they could find be. out i think they could be <laughs> all right so another important relationship for tess is with isabel who we have established as your half sister she shows tess how fun it can be to pick apples and then bake delicious pies from those apples do we each have any fun stories from filming 
I have one that was fun for me, but not fun for our props department, which is that I bake. <laughs> like I love baking and I particularly like to bake like pies and breads. And, um, and I walked onto set and they had everything laid out and I couldn't help it in the nicest way possible. It was like, you can't make pie like that. Like you can't, <laughs> you. And then they were like, we want you to knead the dough. And I was like, this is just flour and water. And so unless we're making clay, I don't know what we're supposed to do. I was like, does any, and I started rummaging through the kitchen of the place we were filming. I was like, is there any butter in here? Does anybody have any butter? Does anybody have any Crisco? <laughs> I didn't. I did not know this because I wasn't there that day. You weren't there that day. Um, so there was a good like five minutes of me like rearranging everything to try to make it more look like we were baking. Did you uh, find everything you needed? No, no, because no. you need like two pounds of butter to make a good pie, and so I didn't know that. I didn't have any. So there's a scene where uh, anybody, and actually, I don't know, you know, there might be like actual bakers out there, right? So if you love to bake and you're watching, I challenge you to be watching the scene where we're like kneading the dough and see if you can pick out what's real dough and what's just the flour and water and, you know, something to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tweet I mean, me. Tweet the, me if you see the problem with the pie making scene. The pies that were there were delicious. Because if, if we're going to talk about having fun on set, I have fun on set when I get to eat apple pie all day. And I was really eating. I mean, Oh, uh, you got in there. You oh, were in there. Yeah, I love <laughs> apple pie. Of course I yeah. was in there. I'm like, any, any opportunity that I have that I get to eat on set, I'm going to take it. I will be eating those apple pies. <laughs> uh, okay. Number seven. Oh, you've been waiting all day to answer this question, and I'll admit it. All day. All Dominic day. has many skills, including <laughs> flying planes and working on the orchard. Were you able to pull from any of your own experiences for this role? Well, Rochelle, interestingly enough, I used to go to Santa Monica Airport, and um, I used to take pilot training. Uh, so I would go and I would fly those little Cessnas that are that we actually fly in the uh, in the movie. So I did have um, some some knowledge of that cockpit and how that plane operated. And uh, and it was actually fun when the actual pilots on the day were going through everything. And I said, yeah, I got it. I got it. And they were really shocked at how quickly I was able to pick up on everything. And when I got out, I, I, I told the pilots, I said, well, yeah, I, I took a couple of courses at, at, in Santa Monica. And, uh, you know, they actually let me take off and they actually let me land. I mean, the landing one was a, like my, my 10th lesson. Um, but I'm familiar with, uh, with how those little Cessnas operate. That's for sure. And I also grew up on a farm, so I was very familiar with, with farm life and, and all of that. Um, I can't say I grew up with an orchard. We only had two apple trees, but Hey, I still pick some apples off a couple trees. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rochelle. Okay. Your character is so well-traveled and has an incredible knowledge of art. If there's one place in the world you could visit, where would it be? The Tate Modern in London. Ooh. I've been there many times. It's my favorite space on earth. I will just go and sit like, just, I don't know. Leave me alone in the Rothko room for a day. Yeah. Like wow, I okay. love the Tate Modern. I, I also, I read that question and I was like, I know the answer to that one. I know this. Yeah. Um, but I do, <laughs> I do love to travel. It's my favorite thing in the world. Other than my family, other than my husband and my children, yeah. my favorite thing in the world is a boarding pass. <laughs> yeah. So, well now, yeah that can be combined. Take yes, and if you go to the Santa Monica airport and fly and finish your lessons, then yes. your family can fly my family. There we go. We just need a yeah. bigger plane. Yes, yes, please a bigger plane. plane. Yeah, 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 we need a bigger plane. I yeah. did not have to fake the scene where I was like, so we're flying? <laughs> yeah, sitting shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. But you looked so good. You were like rocking it. You were so comfortable. Something happened to you. Like you put on those, I was calling you Maverick all day. Like you, you put on those, those cans and you like, you were like, there was something about like, I looked over at you and you were just like, you were so serious. You were like adjusting the mic just to the right place in front of your mouth. And you had this look and I was so happy for you. Cause I you think every so pilot, like... I think every pilot has their little quirks, right? And they all, I think they all have OCD to some degree. So I, you know, I felt like, I felt like I needed to capture that. I should hope so, because I do not want someone laissez-faire flying the plane. I want a perfectionist. Right? I want the most competitive perfectionist on the planet Thank flying you. the plane. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's how I felt about approaching Dominic when he was flying. He has to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. 
Uh, okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Number nine. Our characters spend a lot of time trying to hunt down the missing treasure that could save Bella Vista. Have we ever had the chance to solve a mystery in our own lives? Oh, yes, I have. Oh. Would you like to take that first? Part? How much time do we have? How much time? Story, Wait, time is it? What time is it? I mean, I can yeah. really, like, truncate my story. Um, but I, 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 I want to defer to you, Rochelle, so I don't take too long. Uh, I have a mystery that I've never solved, but it's really relevant to our movie. Um, something I actually did in the film is I, I never take this off. This, I don't know if you all can see that, but this little emerald ring right here was my Bubby's, my mother's mother. Uh, that was my Bubby's ring and she, uh, fled Eastern Europe when she was young and like, uh, a lot of, um, uh, Jews and other people who had to flee wherever they flee from, um, she left a lot behind. And one of the things that she left behind was her real name. And so even my mother never knew her mother's real name. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I very, very recently found a, uh, I don't know that I'll ever know her real name, but I very recently found a shred. I was going through my um, mother's things and I found my grandfather's wallet. And inside I found a shred of an immigration paper that was in, uh, it's, I just found it. So I have to get someone to look at it. It's either in Russian or Polish, possibly Ukrainian, because I don't have a date, so I don't know but I'm going to take it and have someone look at it and then try to figure out what it is because I'm pretty sure it's the piece of, I'm pretty sure it's a part of uh, like partial of the immigration document that my grandmother used to leave her country of origin. Wow. Yeah. And might be the beginning of trying to actually track down exactly when my grandmother got here because we don't know her real name, her real birthday, and we don't know exactly what date she actually uh, immigrated. That's so a, I'm in the middle of a mystery right now. You are in the middle of a mystery. Yeah. Did, this, did you find this after we filmed Secrets of Bella Vista? Yeah. You must have felt like you were reliving the movie. I. It was the strangest thing. It was like, <laughs> it almost felt like when you, um, this is, you know, I don't know if people are going to relate to this because it's so actory, forgive me, but I have this thing as an actor that like, because we conjure real emotions and because yeah. we live in 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 such like alive energetic spaces when we tell these stories, I feel like sometimes we open channels. I agree. And yeah, so I don't think it's a coincidence that I went home after doing this filming, this whole mystery where we're looking for these like lost family heirlooms. And I went home and one of the first things I wanted to do when I got home was go through some of these boxes that I hadn't gone through yet. Mm. Yeah, and that's where I found it. So. That is absolutely amazing. What Isn't that wild? It's wild. That's so yeah. wild. Wow. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that you let us know if you uncover the mystery. I will. I will. And uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a story there. Maybe there's a movie there. I. Well, it sounds like it. That's amazing, yeah. Michelle. That is. How's so your Russian? How's my Russian? How's your Russian or your Polish or your Ukrainian? Once I find out. Not so good. I know a little bit of German, so it's not on the list. <laughs> Got it. I not speak French, so yeah, can't help yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh wait. I, I guess I need to. Oh, rapid fire. I'm gonna. Tr should I truncate my mystery? I'll truncate. Oh my yes, you didn't even answer. Oh, I'm so. I'm no, so no, sorry. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So I'll, I'll truncate mine really quickly. Um, yes, I have solved a mystery, and it was the greatest mystery of my life to have solved. Um, back in 2009, I was catfished. For any of you that know what that is, uh, you know what it is. If you don't, please look it up. I, I can't explain it right now, but the perpetrator of the catfish incident, um, I flushed her out, uh, met her in person, and she was not the person that she was pretending to be. And I then went on a search for the real person in the images, found that real person in the images, and let her know what was occurring seven years later i met that real person in the images and that real person in the image is now my wife so that is a huge mystery and it led to me finding the love of my life yeah 
<laughs> I'm so obsessed with that story. I literally tell that story to like just about anybody I'm in a conversation with. I'm like, yeah. do you know that yeah. I have this friend who married the photo that the person who catfished him used as their profile picture? He found her, he married her. I did. I did. It took seven years, seven years later. But yeah, she's now my wife and we have two beautiful children. And I could not thank the perpetrator of that catfish incident enough. You know, like, I mean, I know that that's, uh, that's a very rare occurrence, but that's what happened in my situation. Yeah. All right. So should we, uh, should we go to rapid fire? You can't beat that. It's such a mic drop, that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Rapid fire. Okay. Right. Uh, this or that, this game, this or that. Uh, we can pick an option we like best. So should we alternate? Let's alternate. Yeah. I will read the first one. Um, so. Stay in one place or travel the world. I think we travel know. the world, baby. Same here. Travel the world. All right. Uh, live in a city or on an orchard? Orchard farm. You? Yeah, live in an orchard. It used to be a city, but as long as I can still get to the city. Totally. You got to be close. You have to be the close. The city's got to be like 45 minutes away. Totally. No further. Yeah. <laughs> and that also raises the value of your property 45 minutes away. I mean, you know, eventually. You're gonna, that's your retirement plan. You're gonna sell to the city and you're, you're out, right? That's the plan. Absolutely. Okay, so go horseback riding or ride a bike? Horseback riding. Horseback riding? You? If the bike has a motor. I'm gonna say motorbike, motorcycle, but if the bike doesn't have a motor, I don't wanna pedal. I'm going horseback riding. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apple picking or grape stomping? Grape stomping all the way for me. You? I'll be watching you grape stomp while I'm apple picking. All right, cool. Yeah. And then you can go bake a pie because you know how to do that. Yes, which is the next one, bake pie or cake. I'm going to bake the pie. Bake oh, pie. although I really like to make cakes. I'm good at, I, I, I make a good birthday cake. What kind? Just like birthday, birthday cake? Like uh, Literally the birthday cake. I, I spent time trying to master Christina Tosi's uh, milk, uh, milk bakery, the her she has a birthday cake. Yep. Yeah, it's like a multi-layer. You actually have to make five different things in order to assemble this birthday cake. Wow. And yeah, so. That's a lot of love and effort that goes into making that cake. Five layers. That's a lot of time. Yeah, but the bakers who are with me know that it's like, I'm like you with the flying, like the perfectionist, yeah. the yeah. like super like zoned in every little detail. It's like that. I look forward to having one of those cakes one day. I'll Maybe make you one. For you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. No All right, uh, for me, it would be bake a pie. Um, I love pumpkin pie. I know that's kind of strange, but I love pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is my favorite. Have you ever baked a pie? Uh, no. And, okay. Yeah, no. But I like to eat them. <laughs> so if I'm gonna, you know, bake bake something, it's gonna be a pie. Okay. Right. Pie a la mode or without ice cream? Uh, always with ice cream. Ice cream is my. Ice cream is the food by which all food is weighed, measured, and found wanting. Agreed. Pie yeah. a la mode all the way. Yeah. True. Okay. Uh, well, oh, it says wrapping up. Thank God, because uh, I feel like we can talk. You and I have been talking all day like we do on set. We talked all day long. And yeah. people are like, okay, we actually have to shoot a movie now, guys. Can you guys please stop with your stories? Yeah, Sorry. we shot three movies on the side while we were making the movie, I feel we like. Did. We really yeah. did. We really did. Uh, okay. I'm supposed to say thank you for joining us, but that's really true. Uh, thank you yeah. all. If you've been watching this entire thing of us Listen talking us. on yeah. and on and on, then yes. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying with us. And we can't wait for you to watch the movie, The Secrets of Bella Vista. Yeah, so please tune in on Sunday, September 18th, 9, 8 central, only on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. You can tweet along. I think, Niall, you might be on a flight, uh, but I'm going to live tweet uh, as best I can, at least a little of the East Coast and the West Coast, as best I can. Uh, but I will be on my Twitter that day checking. So you can hashtag... Uh, hashtag the secrets of Bella Vista and uh, and Hallmark and some of us will be tweeting along with you. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thank you.